I have got some super extra big news. I can't believe this, I'm excited to say this, but tomorrow, July 10th, Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., the Guggen Squads are hosting a meet and greet at the Orange County Convention Center in Florida. We hope to see you guys there. The first 100 people that show up receive a free bag of Guggen Baits. Just thought I'd let you guys know before this video rolls. I'm really stoked to see you guys there. Be sure to bring your small spotters. Thank you guys so much, and let's roll the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah. Rob, if you could give me a jig, and actually, just give me some leader, and I'm gonna tie on a shaky head. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. You were gonna do a shaky yeah, head? Yeah, so getting this out for a shaky head. Mm -hmm. Might be your deal. That? I'm not Rob though, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> oh, look at that shaky head. You guys asked for it, so here it is. I think I picked probably one of the worst lakes to throw this lure. As you guys know in one of my last videos, one of my most recent videos, I was pretty excited to receive this thing, and I told you that if you guys asked for it in the comment section below, I would fish with it on a body of water and try to catch a fish on this exact bait that I have right here, the Arowana Topwater Lure. The only problem is, is I'm up here in Minnesota right now, and I'm fishing a lake that is not only full of pike, but also musky. And from what I understand, pike and musky like big lures, especially the expensive ones. So while I am extremely and utterly afraid to throw this lure at the moment, I'm doing it for you guys. Welcome back, hope you guys are staying safe, catching fish and having a lot of fun. Rob and I have one more day left. So all the Googans dipped out just a few days ago and it's just us, just Rob, Steven, and I. And we've chosen a lake that I've wanted to fish for quite some time, that being Lake Minnetonka. I'm just gonna tie some stuff up and we are gonna get active and try to avoid these bozos that are right over my left shoulder. It's hectic. You excited, Rob? Jacked. Jacked. Speaking of jack, let's go jack some fish in the face. Oh. All right, here's the deal, guys. I'm gonna throw this thing but only because you asked. Only because I love you all so dearly and you wanna see me, you wanna see me catch fish or you guys wanna see me break off on this thing and you just like see me in pain. Either way, I'm gonna tie it on. But I'm for sure tying it on 50 pound braid. No chance I'm gonna tie this thing on like some dainty fluorocarbon. This ain't a joke. Oh my God, what am I doing? Here goes nothing. Just tied a polymer knot. Please hold. I'm kinda curious to see how this thing looks. Let's give it a test cast. Oh, it's really heavy. Ooh, this thing looks amazing without grass on it though. No, get off there, grass, get off there. Dude, this could totally get bit today. Oh wow, that looks so good. Is there a bunch of grass down there? I got one right now. You got one? I'm on fish, hooked up. Oh, he popped off, largemouth on the punch rig. Gosh dang it. Gosh dang it, son of a, son of a d darn tootin'. Darn tootin'. I, you know, oh, don't even go there with me, don't mister. Go there with me. Oh, Rob, you jinxed me, man. Uh, Why didn't you grab it? Son of Why didn't you grab it? <laughs> so within 10 minutes after doing my intro, actually less, probably like five minutes after doing my intro, I picked up this little flippin' punchin' rig right here. It's got a craw, a skirt, and about a 3 8 ounce weight. And I flipped under one of these docks, which is about, what do you say, like, what are we sitting in right now? It's about eight, about 14 foot of water under that dock. A lot of volume under there, and I got bit. So we're trying to really piece together a pattern. Rob, sure as hell, never fished here before. I have never fished here before. So it's kind of fun trying to figure these fish out mm, on a whim. Bit of a challenge, but we're up for it. That's the deal. That was the ticket. This little punchy rig right here on the, who makes this rod? Lunkers what? Oh, okay. That's cool. And then that was 20 pound fluorocarbon with a reel. This is a reel. Crank and crawl. Oh my god, I just got hit on the way down. You ready again? There we go, I'm on. Dude, he ate it on the way down. Yeah, it's giant. Doesn't feel super small. Oh, it was a pike. Was it a pike? Yeah, it was a pike. Okay. That is the main reason why I'm super afraid to throw that expensive lure, you guys. That was a pike. Felt decent, thought it might have been a bass. Then out comes a slithery little snaky snake yeah that's not what i'm looking for today guys i'm looking for big old log heads that was thunder that was a bit of thunder golly yeah i got him largey first fish in the boat wow that took a little bit too long huh Whew. 
The carpet now smells like slime, thanks to this dude right here. That's all it took. It all it took was just downsizing that weight class. I think it was sort of three eighths ounce before this, and now I'm throwing like a one fourth ounce, which is significantly lighter, and that's gonna make that bait drop like this, opposed to like that, like a super fast rate of fall. Nice little, nice little tip for you guys out there if you're missing fish and they're not eating it as they should be. My first ever Minnetonke bass. Ooh, nice and pretty looking. Get back down there, Bubba. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for being my first. Bye. Still on. It's not a terrible one. Oh, that's a pretty good one. Fish. Oh my god. Still on. Oh. Woo. I'd be pumped if this was a fish in Texas, but we're in Minnesota right now. That is a toad largey. That's a stud. Oh wow. I haven't been in Minnesota in quite some time, but this is like probably one of the bigger bass that I have caught in this beautiful northern state. And they don't really grow them like they do in Texas. That's not saying anything bad against Minnesota, but this is primarily, in my opinion, like a musky, walleye, smallmouth territory. When you catch a largemouth that is this big, it feels amazing. Oh, chill out, chill out, chill out. A lot of flipping, a lot of missed bites, and any sort of hookups we can get. That's a big head, dude. Look at the size of the noggin on that guy. Just chill out, bud. Oh, he's so fierce. I knew as soon as I set the hook, that was a good one. There we go. Right on cue, Rob's hooked up behind me. Here's this beautiful guy, which I'm gonna put back now. Nice fish. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's pissed off. Oh yeah, that is what I am talking about, Minnesota. Other than the fact that we are, by God, dodging these wave runners and these skiers. We are still getting bit and we are still catching fish. The one thing that I've picked up on doing this kind of bite here, flipping docks, is that we're getting a lot of short strikes. They're coming up and they're just boop and spitting it right out. They could be like measly little pike, little goofball slimers, but my guess is this water's fairly dirty. There's a lot of weight, as you can hear, hitting those rocks. So these fish are dealing with a lot of pressure right now. Not necessarily fishing pressure, but just like human presence pressure. If that makes any sense, then I, I could be making this up, but that's just what I feel like. The Rob and I have had to adjust our tactics a little bit. Just all of a sudden, we started to catch bass, including that big one right there. Ooh, she was slimy. She was a big old stinker. So yeah, we're gonna keep on grinding. I think really what helped was the, uh, the uh, John Lennon glasses. These are like, a a graduated step above the John Lennon glasses. No offense to John Lennon, I just think that these are a little bit cooler. Another one. Oh my gosh. So you were the first one to catch one of the trench hog? I'm the first person to catch a bluegill on the crack and craw. That is a flipping hook, you guys. Can you believe that? How is that even physically possible? I just got a pumpkin seed on the crack and craw. But more importantly, how the hell did that fish get its mouth around that? That's, that's a four-aught flipping hook. Dude, your jaw's gonna be sore tomorrow. What were you thinking? That's a first. We, we're breaking records out here today. Okie dokie. <laughs> just not what we're after. We're after the big ones. Bait. No way, I'm on. What? Yeah, I was wow. letting it sit there. I was pulling out a bird's nest. It's a pretty good one too. Oh my gosh, is this for real? <laughs> okay, wow, Minnesota's showing out today. This lucky little dude crunched the crack and craw. I'm switching up, I'm trying a little bit different color here. This is more natural color, I'll show you guys real quick. Look at that, that's in a summer craw. And on that, I've got kind of a contrast duo here. Usually most anglers, most people would assume you got to throw a skirt that matches your craw, but that's not the case here. This seems to really kind of stand out, make the craw look a little bit more apparent in the zone. And that's how I've caught the majority of my fish. That's a nice two pounder. I can't say that that catch was reliant on skill at all. I was taking out a bird's nest. So I'm not going to totally give myself credit there, but who cares? It's a freaking awesome catch. All right, Bubba. Oh, big splash. Peace. Wow, that was like a third grader catch. You know, like when you take Avery out fishing? And that's how you spill Kraken Craws. <clears throat> wow, they were like fierce and fiery for a good 100 yard stretch. Yeah, like an hour. And then somebody in this boat jinxed it. I don't know, it might've been me, but they just kind of stopped, huh? Hmm. You feeling sushi tonight? Hell yeah! Don't let me down, as Big K-R-I-T would say. 
Don't let me down. Oh my god, that was a just a steady bite. You keep cranking. <sighs> Look at that. Dang it. Ta ta ta. Looking for that bite. Dude, we're like, what was it like? An, we're an hour and a half, two hours out of freaking strike, and I just got lit up on the end of a dock. And I whiffed. How about that? And I whiffed. Got a really nice bomb back there. Look at that. Bang, bang. Yeah, good. Come on. Hey, Come did you on. see me just get freaking hammered? I got a nice one. I got go. a good one. Dude, they're back there. Oh, man. Dude, they are in this. Oh. Dude, why is this dock so special? Oh. The silence has been broken by this nice largey right here. Let's do that's almost like three pounds. We're talking about a good fish right here. We legitimately are back on the same dock in which I caught my four pounder at. Like we have nothing else to try. Like we're so lost at this point because we're not catching any fish. We went back to the same dock. Rob's on spotlight right now and we're casting all the way down here. He got bit. And I got this nice one. This is weird. I wonder if this dock has just got the right kind of structure. Or maybe it's a little bit of good, good juju. Might be some juju. Oh, pretty fish, dude. That's a chunk. If any of you Minnesota bass are watching right now, I love you so much. Thank you for all the support. You get back down there, you dirty slime ball. That deserves a yeet. Okay, let me break down the rig for you guys because a lot of you ask me, John, what are you using? What are you throwing? How are you catching them? Well, let me tell you. Right now, I am throwing the Guggen Baits Trench Hog. I think that's the most badass name for a bait you can ever have. This one in particular is an Okeechobee Craw. One of my favorite soft plastic colors, especially for crawdad baits. This is not the Okeechobee Craw. Where did the Okeechobee Craw go? I lost the Okeechobee Craw. Okeechobee Craw right here. It's a little bit of natural color with some black and blue. Really nice sapphire blue flakes. It's just money. And since we are fishing some finicky fish right now, what Rob and I are both doing, which mainly Rob is doing, which I kind of picked up on, is we're trimming down about a quarter inch off the head. So we're cutting off about that much here. I'll bite it off for you guys. Mm -hmm. Just don't swallow that piece that you bit off. And there you have it. So it's a little bit smaller. It works good when it's full size, but this is just kind of <laughs> enabling it to kind of pick up some less aggressive bites. And I'm rigging this on a four-op flipping hook, heavy duty, matched with a punch and skirt, which is kind of like a... I don't know, an additive to help you get through the grass a little bit easier. And then, like I said earlier in today's video, we're using a lighter weight. The heavier weights weren't getting the hookups. And I swear on my life, that's what I think is really producing these bites along with the trench hog. It's just making that bait drop a little bit slower, allowing that fish a few more extra seconds to pick up that lure. And uh, this is on the 7.3 Heavy Action Defender Rod by, uh, well, it's by that guy right there. And we're working with 20 pound fluorocarbon because this water is fairly clear. And that's how we're doing it. Easy peasy lemon. Squeezy. Squeezy, thanks. And we're taking this and we're flipping it around docks. And it is getting just chomps right now. Hey, mm -hmm. when's the last time you and I got out on the water and did some fishing? Some good old fashioned. Yesterday. Nephew, uncle. Oh yeah, yesterday. <laughs> We've got big plans um, along with just doing some fun fishing here in our last day in Minnesota. Tomorrow we link up with, uh, oh God, what's his name? Fish is He's on won a few tournaments, a uh, tour, I don't know. Oh. Scott Martin, that's who it is. That yeah. Guy. Anyway, yeah, no, we're linking up with Scott. He's a great guy. Um, and uh, we're gonna try to crank some smallies. Fish St. Clair. I've always wanted to fish Minnetonka, which is cool. I can boom, big fat check mark that one off. And I've always wanted to fish St. Clair. So hopefully I catch my first St. Clair smallie this time tomorrow. That'd be kind of sick. And along with that, we're gonna be filming some more content for the Guggen Baits. Uh, holding this backwards, package backwards there. Yeah. Guggen Baits. I think they're probably gonna be eating the drag and drop, maybe even the, the slim shake. We are scooting off the water. Thank you so much, Lake Minnetonka. God, it was such a beautiful place. It's so funny because as soon as we stopped fishing, it's dead silent, no more boaters. It's been real Minnesota. We're gonna grab some sush, chill, kick it, hang out, and upload some more videos. As for this bait right here, I kind of promised and hinted that I would be throwing today and fishing it and then giving you guys my full opinion, but I took literally one cast and it ended like this. Yeah, that looks, that looks... Expensive? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it does. That's a dock. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find a lake with a little less docks, maybe fewer pike and fewer muskie to toss this thing out and give you guys a full length review on. Well, thank you guys uh, so much for the view. I really appreciate it. Every single view means so much 
You guys are the best, especially with this big Guggen bait launch. It's huge to have you guys be a part of this and help us make possibly, quite literally, some of the most badass baits on the market. We are so pumped. Right, Rob? Yes, sir. He's the most pumped, but not by a month. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are peacing out. As always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop. Yeah.